Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back for a new chapter and a new book today as we are starting the book of Titus. Well, as always, before we get into the text itself, let's go over a little bit of background and history first. So Titus was written in about 64 AD by, seriously, you'll never guess it, Paul, yes, Paul. Now Titus himself was a Greek and he appears to have been a person that Paul himself led to Christ. Now he traveled with Paul to Jerusalem and also served as a representative of Paul to the Corinthian church. In fact, Titus was the one who delivered 2 Corinthians to the church at Corinth. Now, although the New Testament doesn't record it, verse 5 of this chapter indicates that both Paul and Titus went on a missionary journey to the island of Crete in the Mediterranean. Imagine going on a missions trip to Hawaii. Anyways, Titus stayed on to care for the new churches at Crete that had been founded there. Now, just like Timothy, Titus was another young preacher, and this book was sent as an encouragement to him as a young pastor. All right, well, now with a little bit more understanding of the background, let's go ahead and get into the book itself. Thanks for being here today. This is the Bible Vlog. Now, just to show you what I was referring to before, let's go ahead and read verse 5. For this reason I left you in Crete, this is Paul talking to Titus, that you should set in order the things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city as I commanded you. So here is Titus overseeing this new startup of multiple churches in a place he's never been before. Now, as you can see, it's already a really tall task. Now, Paul goes on here to give similar qualifications for ministry as he did to Timothy, so let's go ahead and read verses 7 through 9. For a bishop, what we would call a pastor, must be be blameless as a steward of God, not self-willed, not quick-tempered, not given to wine, not violent, not greedy for money, but hospitable, a lover of what is good, sober-minded, just, holy, self-controlled, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and convict those who contradict. Again, as we saw before, these same type of instructions being given to the young pastor Timothy. See, whenever you take on the mantle of a ministry leader, you need to be above reproach and this is what Paul is really trying to emphasize here to Titus. Now skip ahead and let's look at one more passage here in verses 15 through 16. To the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. But even their mind and conscience are defiled. They profess to know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified for every good work. Now what Paul says at the end here is amazing and eye-opening. They profess to know God, but in works they deny him him. Wow. You know, anyone can call themselves a Christian. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who claim this title, whether inside or outside the church, who have no resemblance of Christ whatsoever. And honestly, it's sad. The reason why this kind of thing is so dangerous is because other people look at you calling yourself a Christian with no Christ-like works whatsoever to back it up. And they sit there and think, what makes you so special? Why should I come to know Christ when you're just like me? Guys, don't disqualify yourself. Let your works reflect the evidence of Christ in your heart. When you truly have a relationship with Jesus, you can't help but change. You inevitably become a different person from the inside out. All right, guys, well, that is going to cover it for us today with the first chapter of the book of Titus. This is another shorter one, only consisting of three chapters with such great, great stuff for church, ministry, and just Christian living. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Make sure and come back tomorrow for chapter two. Hope you're having an incredible day wherever you may be watching this from. Know that God loved you enough to send Jesus. Thanks for being here, guys. We will see you back here tomorrow.